Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines here. The IMF, not a YouTuber, is saying the U.S. dollar's in trouble, and we got Ripple's new quarterly report. That and so much more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.53 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 0.4%. And we see right now 66900 plus for Bitcoin, 3000 plus for Ethereum right now, $111 billion plus market cap for Tether. And XRP is back at the number eight spot, slipping down one. We're off 1.8 and a 24, up two point zero on the uh, seven day. The range of prices between 51 and 53 cents. We have a very interesting chart for you to see before we get out of here. I want to remind all of you, gold is going crazy right now and silver is projected to. If you want to get precious metals, the best place to do it is Miles Franklin, Precious Metals Investments, ladies and gentlemen. All you need to do is put info at milesfranklin.com in the email and in the subject box, put dig gold. Whether it's gold, silver, platinum, palladium, the best metal, bars, coins, tokens, you name it, they got it. And you just need to put dig gold in the subject box and make sure you get the best prices. Let's start right here. Apex in the Netherlands is coming with over 70 speakers and more than 60 sessions at this year's Apex for XRP Ledger. There are plenty of opportunities to get inspired and connect with the XRP Ledger community, no doubt about it. And I'm encouraging all of you, if you haven't gone and you're interested at all, this is an amazing event. Now, I've not been to the one in Netherlands, but I've been to one a couple years ago at Apex Vegas, and it was remarkable. A great experience all the way around, and I encourage anybody to go. You will learn a lot of information, no doubt about it. And then here we see BlackRock Spot Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund. Listen to this, these numbers here. The iShares Bitcoin Trust, known as iBit, has amassed 414 institutional holders in less than three months. <laughs> so if you're wondering if it's pretty much a product that's in demand, the answer is yes, right? Uh, and you guys know, just for anyone who doesn't, I have exposure to Bitcoin. The reason I do is because I saw the ETF approval coming. I chose to take that exposure to Bitcoin inside of my iTrust uh, capital account because I can experience that gain on Bitcoin in my IRA, which is a tax-free gain when I do eventually at 59 and a half have access to it. So I'm excited to see what it's worth by the time we get there. Uh, very exciting. So right now, so is this. Q1 report, 2024 XRP markets report from Ripple. Shout out to them and all the transparency they always bring to the table. Yeah, I'm going to highlight just a few things in here. The entire report's fantastic, but I want to highlight this first spot here. XRP spot volumes, average daily volume surged 865 million dollars in Q1 representing a 40% increase from Q4 2023 daily average XRP derivatives open interest was 500 million in Q4 Q1 of 24 versus 460 million in Q4 23 spot volumes and open interest have continued to exhibit high correlation with general market activity pointing towards robust XRP trading and activity across venues. There you go. And obviously want to continue to see that grow. Now, again, this report is loaded with lots of great stuff about not only Ripple, but what has happened and transpired in the last quarter in the digital asset market broadly. I want to bring you down here to don't forget all the things that are happening here. Stablecoin regulations is at front and center of the EU. We know that they are going to have things going into effect at the end of June, right? Don't forget about Hong Kong and what they've done with to the introduce their regulatory sandbox. U.S. Senators Gillibrand and Lummis have introduced a new stablecoin bill. That could literally get traction this year before this year is over. Think of that if that becomes law. And then your virtual asset regulatory authority. 
in Dubai granted conditional virtual asset provider license and Monetary Authority of Singapore had already granted that license to Ripple. Uh, We know that. And I'm just skimming over a few of these things because there's things I want to share with you here. Uh, Meanwhile, we know in the U.S., the SEC appears to be opening up new battlefronts investigating Ethereum. Uh, Consensus uh, sued uh, the SEC over its power grab of Ethereum. We know also that the SEC reportedly sent Wells notice to Uniswap and Robinhood in its lawsuit against Coinbase. The judge denied Coinbase's motion to dismiss. At this early stage of the proceedings, the court was required to accept all SEC's allegations as true and found it plausible that Coinbase was acting as an unregistered exchange for certain tokens that may be securities. Don't forget, like they're telling you at this early stage, the court was required to accept the allegations from the SEC. Don't forget that the SEC has lied in multiple cases in the digital asset arena. So just know that that I think that is worth worth noting there. And then we know the DOJ charged QCoin and its founder with violating anti-money laundering laws while parallel CFTC charged QCoin operating an illegal digital asset derivatives exchange. We know FTX's founder, Sam Bankman-Free, was sentenced to 25 years and CZ from Binance was sentenced to four months. And we have all the information from the XRP charts here. There was something else I wanted to share here was the really the going live of the automated market makers here. And this is amazing because we know that this is going to build massive liquidity pools, right? And we know that the uh, the decentralized ledger and decentralized exchange, XRPL, this new feature was designed to provide on-chain liquidity and trading capabilities for DeFi developers and users aggregating order books and liquidity pools at a protocol layer to facilitate the best price execution. In other words, not having to go to the central order books or exchanges to make a market. That's ultimately where this is going. And that means that you're going to have a lot of XRP, TVL, total value locked up over time, which will be huge to help support a sustained price over time for XRP as well, along amongst other things. Uh, reminder, Axelar announced its integration to the XRP Ledger, driving interoperability, expanding XRP Ledger's features to 55 plus blockchains. And this is a reminder that, you know, along with all the other great things that we're seeing here, we know that this interoperability is what is going to ultimately make the XRP Ledger as a decentralized exchange or a DEX so valuable and so important. Because, you know, what's the sense of having a decentralized ledger that also operates as a decentralized world exchange if the world isn't plugged into it or has the ability to be plugged into it? So massive, massive things happening here on the precipice of getting some real important legislation uh, for United States. Brad Garlinghouse says here, new quarter, more XLP, XRPL uh, uh, traction. I'm particularly excited that the native AMM, arguably one of the largest updates to the XRP ledger, went live in Q1. And so are we, Brad. So are we. And it couldn't come at a better time because I believe the macro reason Ripple and the XRP ledger exist is because of the stress on the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency, not because it is to replace it, but because it is to complement it and the rest of the dollars of the world and the other things of value once they're tokenized. And it can work as a bridge asset inside of the system, not outside of it and not challenging it but complementing it. And here we see a reminder, Bricks, uh, com- uh, Bricks it says here, IMF confirms U.S. dollars in jeopardy. And basically, the IMF Deputy Managing Director, Gita Gopinath, acknowledged that the impact of geopolitical international trade in dollars, and it really shows up more in trade. And basically, this is it right here. The IMS first de- deputy uh, direct managing director, Gita Gopinath, and she goes in this video, which I don't have to play you, um, and talks about how the dollar is still dominant in this. But you can see that the renminbi, although it's come up, it's not come up to challenge the dollar, but it is in the trade finance area that you're seeing the large Adoption shift. Adoption of uh, renminbi in trade finance and, you know, within the U.S. leaning bloc, you, you really don't see anything. That's not on the slide here, but I'm just telling you, you don't see much at all happening in terms of the U.S. leaning bloc. But in terms of the China bloc, you certainly have seen an increase in the use of the renminbi in, uh, in trade finance. 
So the point to that that I take away from that is, is that although the U.S. dollar is not diminishing, it is diminishing, but not as rapidly as China is in, being increased inside the use of trade finance. Now, this speaks to the BRICS coalition. This speaks to all those countries joining the BRICS coalition that they want to stop using the U.S. dollar and use their local currencies instead. Hence, more traffic happening for trade for the Chinese renminbi, right? So there you have that. Now, let's go to this quick clip here from Gita Gopinath again from the IMF and listen to what she says here. The concern, of course, is that the direction of travel, if, if it is not appropriately controlled, you could end up basically moving dramatically away from a global rules-based trading system, which is what we've lived with for multiple decades now. And they're not down with that, right? That, that means that they wouldn't be in power or control or relevant on the central bank level, and none of them are going to sign on for that. So you can bet your ass something's coming. Right. Just like at the end of June, micro regulations, you could bet that means that so will U.S. regulations. Look, none of these co governments or countries, as much as we want them to have regulations like, you know, a few years ago already. They're not going to sacrifice their own sovereignty. They will do something. Now, obviously, we want it done years ago. But I wouldn't have the bags that I have now had they done it years ago. So there's a part of me that has to be grateful that they haven't done anything yet because I've been able to build my bags. So that's where I try to focus and stay positive. But that time is coming. And that time is coming because we know there's a Triffin dilemma. When if the United States stopped running balance of payments deficits, the international community would lose its largest source of additions to reserves. The result shortage liquidity could pull the world economy into a uh, contractionary spiral leading to instability. Essentially, the Triffin Dilemma is when a national currency also serves as a global reserve currency. And you run into a problem that when you adjust policy, you're either adjusting it in favor of the nation that the currency resides from, or you're making a policy adjustment that benefits the rest of the world and not the nation. When those things become ex exacerbated and exhausted over time and stress due to printing to serve as a global reserve currency, a Triffin dilemma arises to where you can no longer really do anything without hurting all aspects and players in the system. And that's the fast approaching moment that is headed towards us now. Now, uh, you know, uh, and, and I could just, and I could, if I could, just very quickly here, um, it is in this clip, and I will give this to you because you need to hear this, 1324 right here, Barry Eichengreen from the IMF, we've played it before, but listen. And the second part of the question would be, what do we have to do to get out of this position of dollar dominance because it has the undesirable effect of weakening monetary policy? What do we have to do to get out of this position of dollar dominance? And it will run up sooner or later against the 21st century Triffin Dilemma problem. So there you have it, right? That's the problem. And when people say, hey, why are you here, right? I'm here because of the 21st century Triffin Dilemma problem. And I, I truly believe that Ripple, XRP, and the XRP ledger will play a massive role in the transition to help with the spillover shocks of that Triffin Dilemma problem. That's why I'm here. Now, there are a lot of people that want to discredit the why we're here because of that point. But you know what? I'm in line with the IMF. So, you know, for anybody else that doesn't align with that, you're welcome to come in some other conclusion. But that is why I'm here. No question about it. And I want to see the dollar remain dominant while XRP is introduced in a positive way to complement the financial system. Meanwhile, while all of that's going on, Tether's got more trouble again. Tether wallets can be instantly blacklisted at any time. $50 million of USD Tether was just blacklisted yesterday or the day before. Tether blacklisted five wallets containing a total of $54.1 million of USD Tether. Okay, that's good. But I'm telling you, why did the USD Circle bring their legal base back to the United States just as many days ago?
two days ago. Happened to leave USD Tether as the only one that I know of as a digital dollar company operating outside the U.S. We'll see. We'll see. This is a reminder right here from Smoke Dog. United States cre uh, credit unions have the green light to engage in the crypto activities. It says here, we've done supervisory letter telling credit unions it's all right for them to engage in cryptocurrency or more broadly digital assets. We had a letter to credit unions talking about the use of blockchain and distributed ledger technology, letting them know there's nothing with, within the Federal Credit Union Act that prevents them from engaging in the use of technology, provided they are doing their appropriate diligence. This is all coming from Charles Weiss. I remind everybody from 2020, when this came out from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, right here, it says such as com virtual currency companies such as Ripple, message pl payments platform, virtual currency XRP, which can be used to affect settlement of those transfers. That's from the cent or Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And this is talking in a letter addressed specifically to credit unions, right? It says it right here. Fintech, non-bank remittance transfers, providers, and their future expansion into partnerships with other relationships with banks and credit unions. We're on the edge of it. It's coming. One of the things we're on the edge of is this court case with the SEC versus Ripple as well. May 20th, starting tomorrow, parties and any third parties will file letter briefs in opposition to omnibus letter motions to seal. So keep a lookout for that as we move forward as well. Before we get out of here, how about this for an interesting chart? This is an XRP to BTC chart from Dark Defender. Give him a follow. The pair stood on the support level where a reversal was expected. Now remember, Bitcoin dominance, when it's strong, it's controlling the market. When it backs off, that's when the altcoins surge. And that's what this chart is reflective of. If you look here, we expect a reversal from the current level of 54% dominance to 44% by the end of the year. This drop in Bitcoin dominance is the interpretation of an XRP bull run. So if you go back to 2017, 2018, there was a hit for Bitcoin dominance where it fell to the market dominance, fell down below, and that caused the run of 1718 while Bitcoin was cooling off. Then the altcoins kick in. You see again here is a correlation in 21 when we had the pop. You see Bitcoin's dominance drop off and that was during the time that XRP went to 192. And then here we could be looking at this triangle again if it plays out and we see the dominance of Bitcoin cool off temporarily, we could see a surge in XRP price potentially again. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. We're going into the Freedom Zone, and you're going to want to come with us. Today, we are going to get into the J-A-B. I'm telling you, and you're going to want to know about it because it's going to get real today. There's a lot more truth coming about all of this that we were told we had to do. And the damage is really done. We're going into the Freedom Zone right now to talk about it. Uh, digperspectives.com, hit the Freedom Zone and come on in for next to nothing. I'll see all of you inside. All right, welcome back. We got it for you. Here we go.